In 2010, uh, Nigerian internet was very early, it was incredibly expensive. Um, there was no good investment. Uh, pretty much everyone I spoke to at the time that I was interested or expressed an interest in doing something in Nigeria thought I was crazy. And I was talking to someone earlier before, so 2010 to 2014 were the good years. Now it's a bit, you know, challenging for everybody. Um, but 2010, it was, you know, there was no real story. It was loads of enthusiasm from like a, a small handful of people. And their mission was obviously to build an internet company which provided video entertainment to the masses. So um, I landed essentially from the future, which was the UK going back to Nigeria at the time, um, and tried to figure out obviously how to get internet for myself and for, for other people. So this picture is then put up our 160 foot uh, tower. It was our only way to get uh, point to point internet. So. Before this, uh, every couple of weeks, I'll give a guy a package. He'll jump on a plane to London, so I can download, so I upload my movies um, into the cloud uh, that way. Um, as you can imagine, giving someone a package, putting them on a plane to London is expensive. It sounds quite sinister, um, but um, <laughs> but uh, it was the only way we could actually upload it because it, it, it was impossible to do it from Lagos. Um, we still have this tower. It still is the best way for us to uh, to get into there. Uh, we get 60 megabits up and down, uh, which costs us somewhere about six, seven thousand dollars a month. Um, in our office in London, we have a 30-person office uh, on Tottenham Court Road. We get, I think, it's 300 up and down for like a thousand pounds a month. So, uh, as you can see, the internet is still expensive at a at a at an enterprise level. So the bin was really simple. Uh, this is what Nigerian movies typically looked like. There were VCDs. There were thousands of pirates copies. Uh, our, our ambition was to take all of this, digitize it, and just bring it online. That was the first ambition for the entire company. Um, again, at the time, it was probably like, uh, very difficult. So people in Nigeria at the time didn't even know what the internet really was when I was speaking to them. So when I went to go and buy the licenses, literally people had no concept of what I was talking about. All they knew that I was giving them a piece of paper, and alongside that piece of paper there was some money. So they looked at the money, looked at the piece of paper, they just signed. And then that's how the business started. <laughs> so it's very much cash and carry. And it wasn't like, you know, here's a check. It was, there's some money. If you can do this still, let's do it. If not, then let's keep it moving. So it was very, very simple in the early days. Um, again, in 2010, uh, Netflix didn't have its own streaming product. Netflix was still a US-based company. Um, so what we considered to be like the VOD uh, play just didn't exist then. Uh, at the time, I remember it was like YouTube had a 15 minute limit in terms of what you can upload. So it was very, 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 very early in the West, let alone in Nigeria. Um, with that said, when you look forward to the future, content is content is content. The means of it being uh, distributed changes. So first there was cable in the US, and that got really, really big. Then DTH came, which is essentially Sky. Um, in the US, it's DirecTV, obviously, uh, Canal Plus in. In, in, in France and so on. Um, everybody talked about the internet being that next new platform, but at the time there were very few people who were building for it. Um, our ambition was we needed to get there early, so we needed to sort of take some of the, the pain and the early luck of trying to develop a business there. But our ambition was that in the next 15 to 20 years, where will people be watching content? And uh, the key insight was the vast majority of people who we met then in 2010 had never seen the desktop because they didn't need to. It was all sort of smartphones. As the phones have got much more smarter and cheaper, um, we see like an absolute explosion of people actually using um, the uh, actually using their smartphones and and obviously the, the Android operating system. What we knew was that uh, there was something about Nigerian cinema which captured the imagination of lots of people. I thought it was just a, a Lagos thing. But then I realized it's not a Lagos thing, it's like a Nigerian thing. But then I was in Ghana and I realized, actually, no, 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 actually, it's not a Nigerian thing, it's a Ghana and a Nigerian thing. Then I was in Kenya, and it's a Kenyan thing. So you talked about um, the, uh, having one TV station, the number one TV station today, Citizen TV in, uh, in, 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 in Kenya. Three times a day they show Nollywood movies. So about 25% about, about of their actual schedule is Nollywood movies. Um, again, if you go to Tanzania, it's the same. I've been to Kampala uh, in, in Uganda, it's the same. South Africa, it's the same. So wherever there are, wherever there are people who have an appreciation for culture, for religion, for like um, just an aspiration to be better, they find that there's something about Nigerian movies which capture them. And I know people always ask me why is that. And I'm, you know, it, Nigerians are very dramatic. They're very bold. They're very bashful. 
they're very noisy. So wherever you go um, in Africa, you always find the Nigerian community somewhere. So I think it's first we bring ourselves, then we bring the religion. So again, if it's Nigerians, you'll see Nigerian churches springing up, and obviously then we bring our music and our movies. And that was a big mega trend which really started in 2005. 2010 when I landed was just really emerging. Now it's just, it's, it's omnipresent. So it's just connecting that, that content with the people who desperately love it. And those people may or may not actually have money. So you need to find quite uh, innovative ways to find them. So uh, from 2010 to 2015, we essentially uh, focus on the dot com. We have a website, you go there, you can do streaming. But every single day when we looked at, it made us realize that, you know what, um, people aren't even watching. In fact, how much is data? It's too expensive. So how do we restore our product, our reality, to their reality? So the first thing we realized, we needed to kind of completely discontinue uh, the, the dot .com. So we completely de-emphasized uh, iwakotv.com. And we said, you know what, Android is the main platform in, in Nigeria. At least in terms of the operator, uh, traffic is about 90%. And our view is that it should be Android, Android, Android. So last year, we just focused all of our engineering, all of our products, all of our ambitions on the actual Android device. Um, since then, uh, we now have 73% of our pay subscribers coming from mobile Android in, in Nigeria. Typically, um, in terms of like uh, communications-wise, everyone has always assumed, and has been, our subscribers coming from uh, North America and Europe, but we expect this year to Nigeria to be that number one subscription base. In 2011 12, about 90% of our subscribers are outside of, uh, outside of Nigeria. Our, our absolute belief is 2020, 90% 20, of our subscribers need to be in Nigeria because that is where that, the big market is. Um, today, 72% of our global Android downloads come from Nigeria uh, versus 39% last year. Um, we see monthly downloads of like 23.3 thousand downloads. That's a 500% increase. What's interesting is if something is free, people can download it and there's no relationship with it. But when someone's downloading something which is paid for and they know it's paid for, for us that's real like buying intent, so it comes up for us to make things sexy enough for them to actually go ahead and convert. We've done that on no, on no budget. So we stopped spending money on customer acquisition. Our belief is that if someone falls in love, if someone loves Nollywood, we now need to seduce them to fall in love with us. And once we seduce them, we hold them tight. That's called retention, but we hold them tight and we don't leave them. So our mission is just kind of bring people into our community and hold them to them forever and ever and ever and ever. What's interesting, when we did a, a phone study, um, when people were leaving, some of the exit interviews, we asked them, like, so, so why did you leave? They said, oh, I just got a boyfriend, so now let me go and focus on that one. So literally, people were like, I have a relationship now, Iroko TV, I have to, you know, I have to choose it. Iroko TV was in my boyfriend. And that was, that was, that was, that's the kind of the love we're trying to uh, uh, um, uh, create.